France just experienced the shock of the century as Niger bans its mining license. Imagine a nation that finds itself at the bottom of the Global Human Development Index, ranking 189 out of 189. This isn't a hypothetical exam score, it's the reality for the Republic of Niger. France, a significant player in the exploitation of African resources, particularly relies on Niger for uranium. However, after years of exploitation, Niger has grown disillusioned with this dynamic and has made the bold decision to revoke licenses granted to French companies for resource extraction. By suspending uranium and gold exports to France, one of its major trading partners, Niger is signaling a shift in its approach. As the seventh largest uranium producer globally, this decision carries weight. Furthermore, Niger has halted the issuance of government bonds in the international market, further signaling its intent to reassess its economic relationships. This move could reverberate through the Western world, particularly impacting France, which is already grappling with an energy crisis. The question arises, what does this decision mean for both Niger and France? Niger's military government has taken a decisive step by revoking the license of Urano, a prominent French nuclear giant operating a significant uranium mine in the nation. This action follows Urano's repeated failures to meet obligations, leading to financial losses and concerns about France's energy security. While France may pay the price for its exploitation, understanding the historical context is crucial to grasp the full extent of the potential impact on France. To comprehend the significance of Niger's stance, we must delve into the intricate history that has defined the relationship between France and its former African colonies. Rooted in the 19th century colonial scramble for Africa, France, driven by greed and a sense of superiority, claimed territories across West and Central Africa, including Niger. Under French colonial rule, African nations endured exploitation, with their resources plundered to fuel Europe's industrial expansion. The discovery of uranium in Niger heightened France's interest in the region, crucial for its nuclear energy ambitions. Orano, a key player in uranium extraction, has operated in Niger for decades, supporting France's nuclear energy program. However, this relationship has been marked by inequality. While France reaped benefits from Niger's uranium, the local population saw minimal returns, leading to poverty and environmental degradation. Niger's decision to revoke Orano's license must be viewed through this historical lens, representing a potential turning point in the exploitative dynamics that have long defined the relationship between France and its former colonies in Africa. This decision could signal a shift towards reclaiming sovereignty and setting the terms for a more equitable future. The act of revoking Orano's license in Niger transcends a mere response to a company's failure to meet obligations, it symbolizes a rejection of a long-standing system of exploitation that has endured for over a century. This bold move signifies Niger's broader assertion of sovereignty, marking the end of one-sided relationships with Western powers. Niger is no longer content to serve as a passive resource provider, it demands a fair share of the wealth generated by its resources. But how does the withdrawal of Orano's license impact France's energy security? France's energy stability has long been intertwined with its nuclear power sector, with nearly 40% of its electricity stemming from nuclear reactors. Positioned as a global leader in nuclear energy, France's reliance on nuclear power has granted it a level of energy autonomy and consistency that few nations can rival. However, this stability hinges on a steady supply of uranium, a resource not abundant within France's borders. Niger's uranium has played a pivotal role in France's nuclear energy strategy, furnishing the raw material essential for powering its reactors and upholding a resilient energy supply. Consequently, the revocation of Orano's license poses a substantial threat to France's energy security. Without access to Niger's uranium, France faces potential reductions in nuclear output, heightened energy vulnerabilities, and increased reliance on less dependable energy sources. The economic repercussions for France are equally severe. The nuclear industry stands as a vital pillar of the French economy, supporting numerous jobs and generating substantial revenue. Disruptions in uranium supply could lead to escalated energy costs, placing added pressure on French consumers and businesses. 
Furthermore, the loss of Niger's uranium could weaken France's capacity to export nuclear technology and expertise, diminishing its standing in the global energy landscape. Looking beyond France, the implications of Niger's decision stretch across borders. France's dependence on nuclear energy has underpinned its status as a major global power, enabling the pursuit of an assertive foreign policy and the projection of influence worldwide. However, sans a stable uranium supply, France's ability to maintain this influence could be severely compromised. Moreover, Niger's stance might instigate a ripple effect throughout Africa, inspiring other nations to reclaim control over their resources and challenge Western dominance. This shift could potentially reshape global power dynamics, with Africa assuming a more pivotal role in determining its interactions with the wider world. A crucial question emerges, what does Niger's decision signify for the future of African sovereignty and the continent's relationship with the West? Niger's move to revoke Orano's license epitomizes a broader transformation in the power balance between Africa and the West marking a departure from centuries of African nations serving as passive suppliers of resources with minimal agency over the utilization and distribution of generated wealth. The prevailing dynamic has been strengthened by a framework of economic reliance, where African nations are compelled to depend on Western aid, investment, and technology for their economic advancement. Nevertheless, this system is beginning to unravel as African nations increasingly assert their sovereignty demanding a more equitable share of the wealth produced by their resources. Niger's decisive action serves as a clear indication that African nations are no longer willing to acquiesce to the existing status quo. By taking charge of its uranium reserves, Niger sets a precedent for other resource-rich nations to emulate. This shift towards enhanced sovereignty and economic autonomy harbors the potential to reshape Africa's rapport with the West. No longer satisfied with merely being providers of raw materials, African nations are striving to cultivate their industries, advance their technologies, and foster their prosperity. This evolution could prompt a restructuring of global supply chains, with Africa assuming a more central role in the global economy. Moreover, this progression towards heightened sovereignty could yield significant ramifications for the West's engagement with Africa. For far too long, Western nations have regarded Africa as a source of inexpensive resources, a region where they could extract wealth without commensurate reciprocity. Niger's bold move challenges this perception, compelling the West to confront the actuality that Africa is no longer willing to adhere to the antiquated rules. The rise of African sovereignty is likely to bear broader geopolitical consequences. As African nations take control of their resources and assert their independence, they are inclined to pursue new alliances and partnerships both within Africa and across other global regions. This may culminate in the emergence of a more multipolar world, characterized by a more evenly distributed power structure where Africa's influence is more resonantly articulated in international arenas. How might France and other Western nations respond to Niger's decision to revoke Orano's license? This act serves as a wake-up call for France and its Western counterparts, underscoring that traditional modes of engagement in Africa are no longer tenable, necessitating a fresh approach to sustain their influence on the continent. However, the Western response is anticipated to be multifaceted, encompassing a blend of diplomatic maneuvers, economic inducements, and potentially coercive measures. Diplomatically, France may strive to engage in negotiations with Niger's military government to reinstate Orano's license or secure alternate agreements facilitating continued access to Niger's uranium. This could entail offering economic assistance, infrastructure investments, or other incentives aimed at regaining Niger's favor. Nevertheless, such endeavors could encounter resistance, particularly if Niger and other African nations perceive this as an opportunity to liberate themselves from the sway of their former colonial overlords. Economically, Western nations might seek to diversify their uranium sources by exploring new suppliers globally. This could involve investing in mining ventures in other African nations or even considering sources beyond Africa. However, such initiatives would necessitate time, resources, and are not guaranteed to supplant the lost supply from Niger. In addition to these diplomatic and economic strategies, there looms the prospect that Western nations could resort to coercive measures like sanctions or political pressures to coerce Niger into reversing its decision. 
Yet, such actions could potentially backfire, further estranging African nations and expediting the trend towards enhanced sovereignty and independence. Western nations must exercise caution, as heavy-handed tactics could exacerbate the schism between Africa and the West. As Western nations grapple with how to respond to Niger's decision, they must also contemplate the broader implications for their global influence. The rise of African sovereignty poses a challenge to the established power structures that have long defined international relations. Failure to adapt to this new reality risks Western nations being sidelined as Africa forges new alliances and partnerships with regions worldwide. This moment presents a critical juncture for the West, will they cling to outdated models of exploitation and control, or will they embrace a new approach founded on mutual respect and partnership? The answer will shape Africa's relationship with the West and the West's role in the global order. Niger's bold move may signify the dawn of a new era in international relations. For too long, Africa has been marginalized in global power structures, viewed primarily as a supplier of raw materials rather than a key player in its own right. Western powers have historically dominated global trade, finance, and diplomacy, dictating terms for centuries. However, the tide is turning as African nations assert sovereignty and resource control positioning themselves for a more central role in the global economy and international relations. This shift could have profound global implications, potentially leading to a more multipolar world with Africa assuming a significant role in global supply chains, particularly in critical sectors like energy, minerals, and agriculture. With vast resources, a young population, and increasing economic dynamism, Africa stands poised to drive global growth and innovation. However, this transformation requires African nations to develop industries, enhance infrastructure, and cultivate the human capital necessary for global competition. The rise of African sovereignty also challenges existing global power structures. As African nations take on more central roles in international relations, they are likely to demand greater representation in global governance, challenging Western institutions for a more equitable global order. This could trigger significant changes in international organizations as African nations advocate for reforms reflecting their growing influence. Furthermore, African sovereignty will influence global alliances and partnerships. As African nations seek independence, they are likely to forge new alliances within Africa and with other regions, potentially reshaping global alliances and geopolitical blocs. While this new era presents opportunities, African nations must navigate global trade complexities, address internal challenges, and build necessary infrastructure. Overcoming these hurdles could yield significant rewards for Africa and the world, fostering a more just and equitable global order where all nations have a voice in resource usage and economic benefits distribution. Niger's decision to revoke Orano's license symbolizes more than a business dispute, it signifies sovereignty and challenges the old order. This move marks a turning point in Africa-West relations, ushering in an era defined by sovereignty, independence, and mutual respect. As African nations assert control over their resources, the balance of power in international relations may begin to shift. This victory for Niger heralds a broader triumph for Africa, signaling the continent's readiness to claim its place on the global stage. The era of Western dominance in Africa is waning, giving way to a new era of African sovereignty and independence. This transformative moment not only impacts Africa but also the world at large. Embracing this new reality and fostering equal global participation for all nations, regardless of history or geography, is crucial for shaping a more inclusive global community. The end of nuclear colonialism is imminent, prompting reflections on how France and the West will navigate the energy crisis without Niger's resources. Will this move prompt a re-evaluation of Western collaboration with Africa? Only time will tell as the global landscape continues to evolve. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like a and sub so more people can see this.